Hi guys. It is a gloomy gray day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we are somewhere in, I think we're in Newtown, Connecticut, the infamous Newtown, Connecticut on this dreary Friday morning, August 23rd, 2019. Uh, and I need to get ready for my interview, my Collapse Chronicle conversation with R.E. from the Doomstead Diner. We're going to pick the brain of the Doomer R.E. But before I dive into uh, to that interview, I'm going to do what I do every Friday here on Collapse Chronicles, and that's head over to mangabay.com for their annual, annual, yeah, right, I wish, <coughs> their weekly, their weekly laundry list of insults against the planet, uh, where Rhett Butler and the boys and girls just go around a collapsing planet, bringing more and more examples to anybody wanting to, uh, you know, to figure out uh, why the planet is collapsing. And I've noticed <coughs> that this rant, uh, this weekly roundup, which I consider to be the single most important video I do, uh, is the least viewed, is the least viewed uh, video I make every week. I don't know what else to do. I'm going to go right on and doing it for the few of you who understand that mangabay.com is probably the best chronicler of the collapse of a planet that I know of. They sometimes rep <coughs> strays into apocalyptimism. <coughs> But uh, all in all, and, and I'm actually shocked to see, now of course, Manga Bay does have a story about all those fires in the Amazon rainforest. Shockingly, uh, he did not make that the, uh, the lead off story and the title story of the week. I don't know whether he's coming back next week or what's going on, but anyway, I think we've heard, uh, well, we'll never hear enough about the fires in the Amazon story. So anyway, where are we going to start off uh, this week's roundup, if not the Brazilian Amazon? Let's just go to the Colombian Amazon, just north of Brazil, where the I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to call them the Yucas. The indigenous Yuca are being besieged by deforestation and armed conflict <coughs> in Colombia. Yes. Um, as their, their indigenous lands inside one of these protected areas. Yes one of these protected areas in Colombia are being burned just like they are in uh, Brazil. What's bad for Brazil, <coughs> they're being burned, yes. And indigenous peoples are living in difficult health conditions. Imagine that. Guys, <coughs> I'm living in difficult health conditions myself. Uh, yes. They are asking for urgent attention from the state. Meanwhile, they're also having to deal with the arrival of migrants from Venezuela. Uh, I bet they are. Okay. They have a... <clears throat> couple of stories on this new planet-eating highway slicing across Borneo. The Malaysian states of Sarawak and Sabah are in the middle of building more than 2,000 
kilometers, otherwise known as 1,200 miles of the Pan Borneo Highway. Uh huh. The goal is to boost the state's economies and connect them with the Indonesian provinces on the island of Borneo. Uh, <clears throat> advocates of the highway, including many politicians, say the upgraded, widened, and in some places entirely new stretches of highway will link markets and provide a jolt to the promising tourism sector. But skeptics, including scientists and conservationists, argue that parts of the highway cut through ecologically sensitive areas, hmm, and that planning prior to construction did not adequately account for the damage that construction could cause. Can you imagine that? that uh, planning for a new highway slicing across what is left of Borneo did not address the impacts. Imagine that. Say it ain't so, Rhett. All right. And then they, then an associated story, they're talking about how this uh, new planet-eating highway going right up to the edge of Tanjung Datu National Park in Sarawak. Yes, where one of the world's rarest primates, the Bornean banded langur, resides. Yes, <clears throat> raising concerns that increased access from the new highway could bring poachers into the park. Imagine that. Then they finally get to the uh, fires in the Amazon. The number of forest fires in Brazil soared 85% between January 1st and August 20th compared to a year ago according to data from the Brazilian National Institute of Space Research. And roughly half of those fires were registered in just the last 20 days. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> according to one, I can't believe there are any Brazilian NGOs even left. But according to the non-governmental organization Institute for Environmental Research in Amazonia said the fires are directly connected to deforestation and did not find any evidence to argue that the fires could be just a consequence of a lack of rain. Yeah, and they're talking about smoke going all over the country and the Twitter hashtag pray for Amazonas. Far-right president Bozonaro reacted, raising suspicion that members of environmental organizations could be behind the fires in retaliation against his government suspending $33 million pay in payment from Norway to the Amazon Fund. We will uh, get back to that in a minute, but we're going to go look at the wild orchid trade. There is an excellent book called The Orchid Thief, and I think it was even a movie with Meryl Streep called The Orchid Thief, talking about this very issue about 20 years ago. <clears throat> so what, is, what has happened since The Orchid Thief brought attention to this? The wild orchid trade in China is huge, overlooked, and devastating study finds. In just one year of survey, 
researchers recorded more than 400 species of wild-caught orchids involving 1.2 million individual plants worth potentially more than 14 million dollars being traded in markets in southern China. Yes. Traders frequently sell non-native species of orchids. Moreover, native species that either have very small populations or have probably already gone extinct in China also appear in the markets. Do you think so? Uh, from China to, Brazil, to uh, Japan. Imagine this. <clears throat> Japan building coal plants abroad that would not be allowed at home. Japan is investing heavily in building coal-fired power plants overseas that would fall short of its own domestic emission standards according to Greenpeace. Uh, they're looking at plants being built in India, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Bangladesh being uh, bankrolled by Japan. Japan is the only country in the G7 group of wealthiest nations still actively building coal-fired power plants domestically and overseas. Yes, there you go. That is how Japan is saving the planet this week. We're going to go now down uh, to that area where Peru, Colombia, and Brazil all come together, where the Tycuna tribe is taking on the illegal coca growers. Good luck. Uh, the Tycuna indigenous people have chosen to guard their forest against the rapid expansion of illegal coca crops, the plant from which cocaine is derived. Yes. Um, where they are confronting loggers and drug traffickers who have threatened them with death. Uh -huh. The community wants the government to do more to help them. Good luck. Alright, for the knee slapper of the week, Philippine Bill seeks to grant nature the same legal rights as humans. Well, this is, you know, coming from the Philippines, uh, I think nature already has the same rights as humans in the Philippines. Oh, yes. Uh, a coalition in the Philippines is pushing for legislation of a right of nature bill, which would confer legal personhood on nature. The bill, should it pass, will create a paradigm shift. Will create a paradigm shift in existing human-centered environmental laws. Hmm. And make individuals, governments, and corporations more responsible and accountable when dealing with nature. Yes. I'm sure it will. Uh-huh. The bill is part of a growing movement around the world to recognize ecosystems and, spe and species as legal entities as a way of boosting their protection and amid intensifying threats. If anybody wants to see uh, how what it means to grant nature, uh, you know, give nature the same 
constitutional protections as uh, humans, I suggest going to the country of Ecuador where the Chinese oil companies are now actively drilling inside the middle of Yasuni National Park, uh, which some people consider to be the single most, the single most biodiverse hotspot on planet Earth, where I think like 20 years after Ecuador uh, granted the rights of nature, the same rights as Ecuadorian humans enjoy, uh, we can see how well, uh, how well this is going to work. What was there? What was their hilarious uh, knee slapper? Yes, will create will create a paradigm shift in existing human-centered environmental laws, and make individuals, governments, and corporations more responsible and accountable when dealing with nature. Okay, so what is how is Manga Bay? spinning the Arctic sea ice forecast for 2019. 2019 is in line for the second lowest Arctic sea ice extent record. 2019 has seen constant heat and melt conditioning of the Arctic sea ice resulting in record and near record daily and monthly extent and volume and again these are two completely separate uh, the extent and volume I uh, can't go into a whole rant if you don't know the difference between these very important terms uh, over much of the melt season uh, the average volume for July uh, fell to a new record low. Whether 2019 will set a new all-time extent will set a new all-time extent or volume record at the September sea ice minimum remains to be seen with sea ice extent shrinking less quickly since mid-August, possibly putting this year in second place, though certainly among the top five record lowest minimums. The big news this year was the relentless heat in the Arctic with record heat waves over Alaska, Scandinavia, and Greenland, resulting in massive glacial runoff into the sea wildfires were and still are rampant up there you know in the Arctic right now with reindeer and fish including salmon adversely impacted by very hot air and water temperatures whether or not 2019 sets a new sea ice extent or volume low record this September is incidental. What this year dramatically showed is that the climate crisis has anchored itself firmly in the Arctic and shows no signs of easing over the long haul. Yes. Uh, the long haul. Let's see. Uh, one of our environmental heroes, eco warrior Gina Lopez, who battled mines uh, in the Philippines, dies at 65. Uh, Let's see, unbelievably, she did not die by a bullet through her head. Uh, an anti-mining 
activist in the Philippines who actually died of presumably natural causes. Uh, another hero down. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, Amazon rainforest uh, for the real uh, sky is blue headline from the Amazon this week which doesn't uh, focus directly on the fires but you better believe what is going on this week in the Amazon will make everything in this report a hell of a lot more dire than it already is <clears throat> Deforestation and the climate crisis could crash Amazon tree diversity. Wow, never thought of that. <clears throat> New research finds that when climate change and deforestation impacts are taken together, <clears throat> up to 58% of Amazon tree species richness could be lost by 2050. Uh-huh. 58% by 2050. 49% of which 49% would have some degree of risk for extinction. <coughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> by 2050. Uh. Guys, uh, I, you know, this is not a laughing matter. Okay. According to this new, hor new uh, I need to remember what channel I'm on. According to this new report, under the deforestation climate change scenario, half of the Amazon rainforest, mostly in the north, central, and west, could be reduced up to 53% of the original forest. The other half, where agribusiness occurs, could become extremely fragmented with only 30% of the forest remaining. Yes, uh, the new study bolsters the findings of other studies who have modeled results showing that when the Amazon is 20 to 25 percent deforested, it could cross a rain, it could cross a tipping point from rainforest to savanna conversion, which would be a disaster for biodiversity. Scientists warn that President Jair Bolsonaro's anti-environmental policies could result in a worst-case scenario with severe damage to the Amazon rainforest and to its ecological services, including the loss of the sequestration of vast amounts of stored carbon leading to a regional and global intensification of climate change. Then from there, uh, you know, each week uh, Manga Bay, like I do here on Collapse Chronicles, Manga Bay has uh, an interview and this week, their interview is with Susan Lieberman, Vice President of, uh, for International Policy at whoever WCS is. Anyway, she's talking about endangered species. Uh, species whose very future on this planet will be debated include the African elephant, southern white rhino, giraffe, tiger, jaguar, cheetah, and mako shark. 
So uh, if you want to learn how all of those species are heading into oblivion, you can find that here. Uh, here, as long as we're talking about endangered species in this article, they zero in on the star tortoise, the illegal trafficking of the Indian star tortoise is thriving despite its trade being restricted huh? under these endangered species law and domestic legislation. Yes, imagine that, the endangered species legislation uh, not working out as hoped. Okay, uh, earlier this week I reported elsewhere that Germany just uh, yanked about $45 million of funding to Brazil to help with Amazon conservation because they understand as long as Jair Bolsonaro is uh, in office that they're just throwing away their $45 million. So we're going to go from Germany to Norway. Norway freezes support for Amazon fund. On Thursday, Norway announced a freeze of $33 million uh, for the Amazon fund donations which were slated for projects aimed at curbing deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. Um, the anti-environmental policies of Jair Bolsonaro have put the fund's future in grave doubt. Norway's freeze, you know, right on the heels of Germany's freeze, came as the direct result of Bozanero's unilateral action to drastically alter the rules for administering the fund even as monthly deforestation rates shot up in Brazil. But of course, Bozonaro is calling uh, anybody claiming that deforestation uh, has increased under his watch, including his own scientific agencies, a pack of liars, while he's claiming it is environmentalist, uh, not planet eaters, setting those fires in the Amazon. Bozonaro seems not to care about the loss of this funding. Yes. Uh huh. But other Bozonaro critics have raised the prospect that the Amazon fund freeze could be a first step toward a global consumer boycott of Brazilian commodities. Uh, there you go. Bring on the uh, boycott of Brazilian products. Let's see. Uh, now here is talking about this giant extinct penguin and parrot that once lived in New Zealand. I can't tell from the summary of this article whether they're suggesting that this giant penguin and parrot were killed out by humans or not. Uh, you know, New Zealand is one of the classic uh, examples of the overkill hypothesis where, you know, because it was the most recent uh, human invasion by the Maoris. Is that how you pronounce that word? When was that? About 1,500 years ago, where the humans moved in 
and every species of earthling that lived in New England was, prom was promptly eaten, where climate change had zero to do with the equation, that these, uh, these social justice warriors, uh, these apologists for the noble savages cannot claim on any level that in New Zealand climate change had anything to do with that megafaunal extinction. Uh, but again, I need to remember what channel I am on. So we are going to move from New Zealand to Nigeria. Yes, to Nigeria where this uh, tribe uh, is taking on the planet eaters. Oh yes, uh, where these indigenous tribes are trying to resist threats from logging companies and attempts by state authorities to build a super highway that would destroy much of their community's forest. Hmm. Community leaders worry that if state and national governments continue to ignore their efforts, villagers might think their conservation off might think that conservation efforts do not respect their rights to survival. Imagine that, that Nigerian conservation efforts do not recognize the rights of indigenous people to survive. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but I understand that this will probably be the least viewed uh, chronicle of the collapse of the week. But uh, I just do what I do. And I've got to wrap this up because I need to uh, get ready for my interview with R.E. from the Doomstead Diner. We're going to hear what uh, the head cook and bottle washer of the Doomstead Diner, uh, what his comments on the state of the planet in summer 2019 are as the collapse moves into overdrive from the Amazon rainforest to the Arctic. Bye, guys.